Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC. We're gonna check out the Rhino today. That's right, the QSP Rhino. Uh, this one does come to us from the Apex Pass Around and QSP, so really, really appreciative of them for letting us check this guy out. Now, we've seen some budget knives and we've seen some quite a bit of OEM from QSP, obviously Finch and so forth. What we're going to be taking on this one is more on the premium side from QSP. And trust me, we will definitely, definitely be getting into that. But this one is the Bead Blasted Titanium. Now, there's a few different versions. Like I said, you've got this one. It's the Bead Blasted Titanium. You've got a purple titanium. You have a black wash tie with a black wash blade. The purple has a satin blade just like this one does. And then you have a bronze titanium with a satin blade. That one looks really good. And then we've got a couple of different blade options, but we'll get into that here in a minute. But like I said, you've got the bead blasted tie here. But this is what kind of makes it... Wow. <laughs> yeah. The Mokutai clip, the Mokutai backspacer, and you've got sort of that twisted style on the backspacer. Really really interesting i think it looks good i think it's kind of a cool look on it but that mocha tie is just wow that's very very gorgeous got a lanyard hole absolutely and unfortunately lefties it's only right hand tip up so sorry about that lanyard fans can rejoice lefty fans oh, not so much everything is built i mean we're talking we've talked a lot about qsp quality in their their own knives and in their oem work and it just comes through every single time and, and this one's no different obviously you can see it it is a frame lock there but just overall a gorgeous knife it is a flipper uh, you do have some jimping there uh it's not really it doesn't really aid the grip in flipping much so and then you do have this little guy right here eh, no no not so much but anyway it is a flipper this one is tuned very nicely on that flipper tab the detent is really good um i don't think i would call it too strong but it's strong so a very very good detent on an action pretty solid now you're looking at m390 on the blade steel Let's check our centering. Yeah, that's good. Centering is pretty darn good. But now you've got this sort of clip. I'm going to call it a clip point. I know some places they were kind of referred to it as there's one that, well, that's probably the compound ground. There is a compound ground version as well. We'll talk a little bit about the difference. Now, as you can see here, it does say M390. Now, this one says sample. These are available now. These are out. These are available your retailers, I know our good friends, Austin at uh, Traditional Pocket Knives, uh, Brian at Blue Creek Knives, they, they have them in their stores, and then the larger retailers have them as well. But look at that fuller on this thing. That's one thing that really caught my attention. That fuller is just, wow. It's, it's there. <laughs> It's it's no mistake, man. Holy smokes. Look at that fuller. I really, really, I, I like the look of that. Now, you guys know clip points aren't usually like my favorite, but I just really like the look of this blade. Now, you do have some jimping that stretches all the way out there, which is good. It's decent. It catches your finger enough to what it needs to. I would say it's probably more for, and it's kind of more of that spiral jimping kind of like your backspacer there so it is jimping but it's got that sort of spiraled look to it so i think that's kind of cool a nice little embellishment on the blade kind of gives it a little bit of a different look now you don't have this i would say is not an option <laughs> uh yeah that that flipper tab is pretty small and if you go up there no matter how you go up there you're gonna be on that blade so not really uh choking up is it's not really a thing on this one. But, all right, let's look. See what we've got overall. Back out just a little bit. There we go. So, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right about seven and a half. You're looking at about a four and a quarter handle and then about a three and a quarter inch blade. Full cutting edge. 
Um, every bit of blade has that every bit of blade has a cutting edge on it, so that's very good. Um, it does have a little bit of a smile I see there. It's kind of it's kind of sharpened a little bit far back, actually, from the looks of it. Now this side is not. Now this is a prototype. So, you know, a prototype, okay. I, I can see little things like that on a prototype. You know, this is not a production model per se. Uh, grip length. Yes, yeah, see, we got a grip length going for you of about three and a quarter. But I tell you what, it, my hand fits in that. Oh my goodness. Feels really, really good. That knife pretty much hugs my hand. I have an absolute wonderful, wonderful grip on it. All right, where we got? Let's see here. We'll do our size comparisons. There's the PM2. PM2 is going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, pretty close to a half inch on the blade and yeah, pushing a half inch on the handle too, it looks like. And then the bug out. Bug out is actually, as far as overall length goes, bug out's pretty, uh, Rhino's got it by a quarter of an inch on the handle and the blades are really right on par with one another. So good overall look there. All right. Let's get a weight on it. All right. What do we got? 4.4. Not bad for the size, honestly. 124 grams. So, oh, we got to check out our carry. Not a deep carry. Um, the clip, you know, usually I'm not crazy about these ball style clips. I, I don't know. It's just not my favorite. This one wasn't too bad. Not too bad at all. You do have a little bit sticking out of your pocket. But, of course, that Moku tie, that's a pretty big, <laughs> that's going to look pretty, uh, people are going to be able to see that. We'll just say that. People are going to be able to see it. Not that that's a real big deal for me, but, you know, for some people it might be. Um, overall, well, like I said, this one is a prototype, but, you know, we, we picked out, we kind of picked on the blade a little bit where it's ground, it looks like a little bit too far back. But overall, I mean, the build is really, really nice. I like the embellishments on the blade and on the backspacer. I kind of like that. The Mokutai is just, wow, it really stands out and is really, really good looking. Like I said, now, if you have larger hands, this might be a little bit too much of a squeeze for you. And like I said, there's not really a spot to choke up there. So people with larger hands, my, this might not be for you. Now, I did say there is a compound ground version of this, and they call that one kind of a reverse tanto, where this is kind of more of a clip to me. Um, well, let's talk about price. These are premium, guys. M390, titanium, Mokutai. This one, this model that I have in my hand, sells for about $358. Um, grail knife, maybe for somebody. Um, a really awesome gift for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But very interestingly, the compound ground ones, are they're running about 428. And that's really the only difference in the knives is that one, it has a compound ground on it. Now, there's two different versions of that one. There's, you got the blasted titanium like you see in my hand, and then you have the bronze tie. Those come in the compound ground reversed, uh, tight, or reverse tanto uh, style blades. And these four, like I said, blasted tanto, black wash titanium, bronze titanium, and then purple. Purple. They like that purple. QSP has really liked that purple quite a bit, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of people like purple knives, but they've done, they've done quite a few knives in that purple. I mean, overall, yeah, it's great quality. Like I said, this being a sample, there was a couple little things that I nitpicked on it. Um, I would, let's just say I would hope at this price point, blades are ground the way they're supposed to be ground and all that stuff, which I'm sure they are. Knowing QSP, I, I myself have had very little issue, well, not any issue that I can think of right off of hand with a QSP built knife. I really, I really can't. Maybe a, you know, a pocket clip not hitting my hand right or something like that, but that's, that's just design. That's not really quality. QSP's quality is usually pretty 
on point, in my opinion, in my experience, I should say. So, but thank you so much for the to the pass around group to QSP uh, for the opportunity to check out the Rhino. Really nice looking knife. Like I said, it's on the premium side, guys. I get it. Yeah, it is. But there you go. A little something for everybody. You know, and believe it or not, I, I, I have to say this. Um, I just showed a fairly expensive knife here recently, and I don't do a lot of them. I really don't. Um, but I was surprised on how many people were like, hey, yeah, I got in on that pre-order, and I'm really looking forward to it. So that's cool. I'm really glad that I can show not only the budget knives that a lot of people, you know, are probably going to trend towards. I mean, let's face it, that's just the way it is. But these a little bit more embellished, a little bit more premium knives, it's really cool. Uh, to get that feedback from you guys uh, when you get out on these pre-orders or you pick something up. That's really, really cool, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. So thanks a lot, guys. Greatly appreciate you. As always, like, subscribe, leave me that comment. You know I love talking to you. Until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.